Okay, so I have explained these positivistic and interpretivistic you know, approaches, which are different from natural sciences and social sciences, right? And they vary in certain ways. And we can sometimes combine these two strategies, which is another method, which is called mixed method approaches. We can sometimes combine, uh, you know, these uh, two different methods as well, but it is very rare. And that happens in on bigger levels, for example, master's or, thesis or PhD thesis, right? Not on bachelor's level. So you need to consider a few things, um, you know, in your, to see the things from your perspective, from your level point of view as well. So that is it. I would like to, you know, stop it here and then share lecture two with you. Basically, this was lecture one that we are going to start with lecture two today. And we are going to see how uh, these different methods work. So what is a research? Again, it's a researcher poses a question. The researcher controls or collects data to answer the question. And the researcher presents an answer to the question, okay? That is said by Cresswell which is mentioned in educational research, planning, conducting, and evaluating quantitative and qualitative research book, okay? Then you need to tell us what is the importance of research. Again, this research adds to our knowledge. It addresses gap. It expands your knowledge. It replicates knowledge and adds voices of individuals to knowledge. Then what is another reason to it? Research helps improve practice. Educators gain new ideas for their job. Educators gain new insights to approaches or educators can connect with other educators, right? For example, what's your purpose or what is the importance of your research? You are going to be working with, you know, um, you know working for your degree programs. That is your personal insight of this research, whatever you're going to conduct or whatever you're conducting at present. The purpose is to have that degree program resolved. But when you'll be moving ahead, you will have different you know, purposes for doing that. That is how the importance works. Now I would like to move to the problems that we have with research today. We have contradictory or weak findings. Sometimes you will, there are students who come up to me and say, miss, we have had like, you know, literature reviews with us, but we might not find models, frameworks in that literature review or paper or whatsoever thesis. So sometimes uh, related works also matter and that is how research process should be kept very closely in mind when you're working upon your thesis. That is why. Okay, so sometimes people do not give enough, you know, data that would explain their thesis or paper well to the reader. Sometimes it is questionable data. We don't know. We are not sure about the findings. And I mean, there are no particular you know, uh, you know, methods explained in a manner that they, you should be sure about the findings, you should be sure about the data, unclear statements about the intent of the study, the things are unclear, so that you are not able to understand someone's perceptions of conducting this research closely. Why? Because uh, they did not explain that well, or maybe they did not use you know those certain or relevant references to that okay or lack of full disclosure of the data collection procedure sometimes the data collection procedure is not mentioned or explained well so that it is it creates a gap between the reader and the the researcher and that is how you're unable to understand things you know in a better manner then inarticulate rendering of research problem so we're going through this again. Now, the first thing is identifying research problem. When I was uh, you know, working with uh, students, 
for research, they came up with this idea, Miss, what should we select as a topic? So my dear, we do not select the topic at the first place. We select the problem that you're going to address, which I've explained yesterday as well. So I'm not going to talk about that in detail today, but I'm going to highlight that, yes, you need to go for that. Then you need to understand where am I going to find the lit review of uh, literature review available? So you need to locate those resources. Then you need to specify research purpose. What is your area, close area that you're going to work upon? Then you will go for data collection. In, in between, you need to have a theoretical model with you as well, theoretical framework with you as well. Then you have analysis and interpretation of data, right? Sometimes you, you use the word analysis and sometimes you use the word interpretation. So it depends on your type of thesis and your type of research. Then you have report and evaluate research. You need to go for evaluation and evaluation. We give exact facts and figures about your data collection, right? We talk about results. We talk about what are the implications of your study. And these are those two headings, results and implications that should be mentioned at the end of your thesis project. If you're not mentioning these and if you're not explaining these, you might have your question, sorry, you might have your thesis questionable at the end of the day, right? So you need to go for evaluation very closely when you talk about um, any research process. Then you're going to locate for a research problem. You'll specify, justify, suggest if this is something that we have already done. I would give you bullet points for a review of the literature. Now, this is a uh, you know thing that I have just come across. I have had this process with my students get done. I shared like you know journals with them, these e-links with them. So students find first and foremost difficulty that students find is locating relevant literature. Now you need to see. This is not me saying, this is Cresswell saying to you that you need to locate resources from books, journal, journals, or electronic resources. Now, my dear, I would explain this. Electronic resources also have limitation these days. You cannot go for every other website that you find on internet because you don't know who owns this website and who is like, you know, uh, very much active there, who has, uh, you know, shared this information that you can see on the website. What is the source of it? If you see everything with a particular reference over any website, you can go for that. But if you don't see references, don't go for them. There happen to be certain cases with my students when they come up to me and then say, they, they say that, okay, miss, we thought that the things were very relevant with our work. But if when we go for the references, we did not find any. So then they had to delete all of that, uh, you know, literature, uh, re a review that they find on that website from the thesis because if you're talking about anything without any reference you might go for it might go into plagiarism okay so you need to be very much clear uh, you know careful when you are locating resources if particularly about you know electronic resources talk about websites and talk about links you can go for every other link if you don't see any references or any person working there or the name of the person which is written there okay these are reliable most reliable three resources choose resources to include in the review summarize the literature in a written report you need to summarize and you need to summarize in a particular manner okay you need to go for the recent studies and you know that is how you're going to explain your uh, literature review in your thesis if you are a person who is going from, you know, random selection of articles, research, research articles, that again is going to be the, you know, writing flaw in your literature review chapter, because you need to be very much careful about the dates and the year of research. So you need to go for the latest ones. And then, you know, you need to go to the evolutionary or maybe if you want to mention, but there is this APA style which says that you can only mention 10 years, you know, researches which are covered in 10 years. You can go beyond that or, you know, SNA came 1960s, research, like, no, only 10 years. 
you have to be there. When I was presenting my MS um, Viva, I was questioned this thing that you have presented. By the way, I was presenting Viva in 2021 this year and i was questioned that okay you have not mentioned any research upon this particular topic in 2020 the latest reference that i had was of 2019 so this is a question that i had i mean see look at the importance of the year of literature review so i said that um, i did not find any in 2020 but I should have had this is one thing that I regret and I would you know advise you to sh you should have that should have better resources with you okay by the way one or two years difference doesn't matter much but the good thing is that if you have if you have them you should mention them okay how are you going to identify the purpose statement the major intent of your study what do you want to work upon what is the major thing that you are looking for? What is the major thing you, that you are working upon? That is your purpose statement. Then you're going to list participants in the study, and then you're going to study the site of study, the site of your research. The site means context, okay? For example, I conducted research on IBA students, Institute of Business Administration students of University of Synth. So that is my context. This is my site. I worked on BS part one, BBA part one students, sorry. That is my participants, okay? My major intent was to work on e-learning on undergraduate students, okay? This is how you break down these things with you so that you may have practically correct and particular, you know, uh, correct particulars of your thesis. Then you're going to narrow the purpose statement to research questions. Then you need to formulate research questions based on your uh, area of study. The research process, the third thing is collection of data. We are going to determine the data collection method, okay, upon uh, you know, selection of uh, data, data collection method is going to be purely based upon your nature of study and your area of the study as well. The second thing is like the individuals to study, obtain permissions. This is very important. If you're working upon a certain, um, you know, field work, if you have a field work, for example, if you're a business student or, um, by the way, in linguistics too, we need to obtain permission. I also obtain permission. So this is something which happens and has to happen. Data design, data collection instruments and outline data collection procedures. This also you need to do and then gather data. Let's go through the last step. Take the data apart to look at individual responses. How you're going to interpret data, you're going to look at individual responses if it is qualitative. If it is quantitative, you're going to look at the numbers and statistics only how much 60%, 30%, 40% of people agreed to this thing, 30% of people did not agree to this thing. And if you're talking about science students, science students will say 80% of this chemical was relevant to the study, 80% of this particular situation was not relevant or not you know, reliable to my study. Okay, this is how your interpretation matters and differs from one field to another field. Represent the data in tables, figures, and pictures. Yes, we are going to be listing, you know, the tables and, you know, figures or maybe pie charts in qualitative too. Though we have them in quantitative always, but we are going to talk about them in qualitative as well. So, and if you want to add pictures, some um, people who are going for discourse analysis, in linguistics or content analysis in literature or critical analysis in literature, they go for pictures as well, pictures from that particular chapter of the novel. If you want to insert, you can insert that and that will look good. And those people who are from science students, they also give pictures, I mean, based on their chemicals and, you know, or whatever they are performing, their particular function or their particular procedure, whatever it is. If you want to give pictures, it will look good and it will be like, you know, more objective. And pictures are somehow some sort of proofs, okay? Validity of your research. Then you will explain conclusions from the data that addresses the research questions. 
how are you going to evaluate? You are going to determine the audience, structure the report, and write the report sensitively and accurately. You're going to give a pressy format of your thesis. That is evaluation. You're going to write the whole thesis in just a few you know, paragraphs. That is how evaluation works. Then you're going to use a quality of research using recognized standards in a discipline. You need to keep all these things in mind, right? This is another pictorial, you know, view of the research process. Research problem comes first, then review, then questions. We talk about quantitative, it's different. We talk about qualitative, it's different, right? Quantitative designs are experimental. You can see here. Quantitative designs are experimental, correlational, and survey. And then you have quantitative, which is grounded theory, narrative, and atherography. Then you have combined methods, which says mixed methods or action research. I did action research, actually. So we have then instruments, we have then sampling, we have then analysis, and then interpretation. Okay. So what are the major characteristics of quantitative? It describes the research problem through trends and relationships, right? It is not going to be perceptionist based. I mean, for example, Nazia has said that there is no place for Nazia. Nazia may be one of the participants and there is no need to mention her, okay? And provide a major role for literature to suggest questions and justify problem, create purpose statements. This is more or less the same thing that we have done already. In qualitative, you go for explaining a problem through detailed understanding of a phenomenon. I will be, if I'm a you know, participant in a qualitative study, I will be explained particularly. Okay, I have a place as a participant in qualitative. Then you have the literature justify the problem, state purposes. By the way, in quantitative, you go for hypothesis and prove, proving sort of statement. But in qualitative, we do not have that proving sort of statement or, you know, a purpose. We write the research report using flexible and emerging structures and incorporating the researcher's subjective relaxivity and bias. By the way, bias is a very negative term used in our society, but it's actually not, you know, negative term. You know, you can be biased because you are observing certain things. Okay, and you as a researcher have a place. So you can be biased at a certain point, biased in a, in, a, in a manner that you as a researcher are very much agree to the situation or not agree to the situation, right? So you have a place in qualitative research and that is how you explain your point of view as well. And that is why we say it is more or less flexible if you talk about you know, qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative is not flexible type of research and qualitative is. What is the similarities and differences? The similarities um, between these two types of research is all of them have the same research process and they same have to have, you know, introductions and, you know, importance of research problem. Both forms of research use interviews and observations that are a must, okay? But in, in quantitative, we sometimes go for questionnaire, which cannot be there in qualitative. If you want to go for a questionnaire in qualitative, you need to be very much open-ended, right? You need to give like place, uh, you know, blank, sorry, for the responses of the participants. Whereas if you talk about quantitative, you need to be yes, no, or choose from, you know, the Likert scale, you know, uh, uh, very much, much neutral disagree agree <clears throat> strongly agree this is how you have to have a table that you're going to follow if you talk about quantitative but in qualitative you don't have to do that then differences include quantitative data is more close-ended explained qualitative data collection is open-ended quantitative data is based on statistics whereas qualitative is based on image analysis or textual analysis which we say contextual analysis as well. Quantitative reporting has a set structure, qualitative may be more flexible. How are we going to decide now? I mean, having all this discussion, 
how are you going how are you going to see what type of research you want for yourself what type of methodology you're going to see what matches your research okay then what is fit for your audiences as well and then you will see what relates to your experiences and as your training for example i have done qualitative in my bachelor's uh, research and you know actual research and masters so i've got more or less exposure to both of these skills for example there's a person who did qualitative in both the research um, degrees the person will be more towards this approach qualitative approach the person will have more knowledge about qualitative procedures uh, and apparently if a person is working on quantitative and i mean has worked in more than one or more research uh, research areas and quantitative the person will have that expertise as well so depending on your nature and depending on <clears throat> what type of experiences you have had you should choose accordingly this might be the last topic of the lecture today um, because uh, i don't want to burdenize quantitative designs and uses we have intervention and non-intervention okay intervention means when you're working on an experiment science students you're always going to work for an experiment and you will have an intervention group okay experimental group where you can have you know different formulas working with different formulas adding them uh, you know mixing up chemicals and then you can see okay if this works for that or no i mean you are going to experiment but people like us who are who are you know going for quantitative studies but do not want to go for an experiment may go for correlational or survey right now correlational means associating or rela relating variables in a predictable pattern for one group of individuals that means you're going to have variables but those variables will not be experimental in nature they'll be fixed and they'll be you know in one pattern for if you if you're working on you know different individuals or group of individuals right that matters i mean it depends on your study but you're going to work on fixed patterns you're not going to see if this thing is working or there's new invention or there's room for invention or no no there's no uh, any particular situation happening in correlational and the last thing is when you want to talk about a survey it just explains what is happening in the population i mean you will explain the the phenomenon as it as it is there is again no room for any new thing or any new invention clear yeah? Now, if you talk about quantitative, I repeat myself because this is a little bit tough to understand. Quantitative designs have two groups. Okay, it is again splitted into or divided into two groups. One is intervention research and another one is non-intervention. You talk about intervention, this particular group is only for science students and sometimes for, you know, business students as well. Or we have in linguistics, we have psycholinguistics. Uh, where we are working on human brain and then we have like you know a little bit space for intervention as well that again is very limited to one field of study and the rest of the fields we do not or we cannot go for any new you know, like you know phenomenon when you talk about these two these two do not have any new or any experiment sort of thing so they are very much fixed and correlational has uh, has to be dealt with variables but in one fixed pattern okay and survey just explains things just the way they are there is no need for any particular you know uh, strategy to be done okay and then we will move to qualitative this means that you are having these three type of researchers the ethnographic research i told you exploring the shared culture of a group but in ethnographic study you need to go as a researcher and live with them with that particular group of people um here i would like to give example of uh, these documentaries if you have seen the documentaries or or for example we have been watching national geography since our childhood right people go into jungles and film 
the yeah like you know movements of animals and they explain certain procedures that happen in jungles i mean or maybe characteristics of one breed another breed or maybe this and that so you can relate to me in that manner so that particular is ethnographic research because you as a researcher are going to be moving to that particular place for your observation and you know living with them okay and the rest of the two does not have these particular characteristics so the second thing grounded theory research explains any common experiences of individuals to develop a theory okay for example i am a person who wants to work on you know um certain strategy for example or for example i'm working on with the like you know e-learning students those students who have got exposure to e-learning okay uh, so i will be just explaining how their experiences have been throughout e-learning process okay if they are explaining something to me that is important and that is new i may be able to formulate a new theory at the end and that will be called as grounded theory research okay i may i insist upon this i may or may not it is not important and it is not necessary that you always you know have a new theory at the end of the research okay then the last one is narrative it is completely individual um, this type of research includes individual experiences or stories to describe the lives of people. Uh, again, I will give the example of documentaries, those documentaries which are based on someone's life. Okay, for example, uh, for example, Benazir Bhutto Saiba's life. Okay, if there are documentaries made or made on her life, it will be narrative. Okay, because we're explaining things from her life only which are not questionable, which are not going to be uh, biased, which are not going to be changed, okay? The series of events has to be explained just as the way that are there in her life. That is how we carry on qualitative designs and uses as well. The last thing that I'll explain is Combined designs and uses, okay? Now we have these two, you know, research uh, uh, tools or methodologies, which are a little bit complex in a way that they have, you know, characteristics of quantitative and qualitative both. So if you talk about mixed pattern research, it can combine quantitative and qualitative data to understand and explain any research problem better. If I think I should go for questionnaires and surveys both, to explain certain strategy, I can do that. But normally people suggest if you're working on a PhD you know, level or maybe master's level, only then you should go for mixed methods because it tends to be a little bit complicated compared to the other simple methods. And uh, action research is itself a research methodology which, in which a researcher is the practitioner. For example, I carried action research because I was a teacher of that class as well. Okay. And that's how I carried uh, the research. By the way, I would like to share one thing with you. When I was telling you sampling, and I told you that sometimes you can, you know, uh, lose your participants as well. So I basically lost my participants while my study. And that phase, uh, you, you know, was a little bit difficult for me because I was a teacher when I started the study, right? And then I changed my job and then I got another job, which I am doing right now. So I got, you know, uh, I had loss of connection or interaction, daily basis interaction with those students which are selected for my study. Okay, so sometimes it happens and it is very real. Then I go, you know, went for convenience sampling. And that is how, you know, from that particular group of people, I selected those who were in contact with me and then I worked with them till the end. So sometimes you can always, no, you know, mix and match and, you know, keep because the research process has to be kept going. And, and why I said these two are a little bit complex, because they have their own peculiarities. Um, we have research process, you know, process itself, which is a peculiar. But again, if you choose any of these methodologies, you will again have to address them with a particular 
like you know focus so with this i am done for today i am going to give you 10 minutes <clears throat> and we have we are left with 10 minutes actually for question answer sessions uh, if you have any ma'am i have a question yes मैम जैसे आपने इसमें लिटरेचर रिव्यू में इलेक्ट्रॉनिक रिसोर्सेज का बताया yes. मैम इलेक्ट्रॉनिक में जैसे कि हम हम कोई पहले थीसिस निकाल रहे हैं उनके नीचे जो भी जितने भी रेफरेंसेस हैं उन पे हम साइट पे सर्च जाके कर रहे हैं उनमें से जो भी आर्टिकल्स लिख रहे हैं रिसर्च आर्टिकल वो हम उनको पढ़ रहे हैं लेकिन मैम समटाइम्स ऐसे हो रहा है कि रिसर्च आर्टिकल में कुछ वेबसाइट्स ऐसी हैं जो हम गूगल स्कॉलर पर भी अगर हम सर्च करते हैं रिसर्च आर्टिकल के लिए उनके मतलब सिर्फ एबस्ट्रैक्ट हैं और लेकिन उनके कंक्लूजन वगैरह कुछ भी नहीं मतलब ये साइट्स पूरी क्लोज हैं कुछ साइट्स साइट्स क्लोज क्या तो क्या मैम हम उनसे मतलब मटेरियल ले ले सकते जैसे आपने कहा यहाँ पर कि रेफरेंसेस लाजमी है उसमें तो मैम कुछ भी रेफरेंसेस नहीं है सिर्फ एबस्ट्रैक्ट ही होता है एबस्ट्रैक्ट से या हम इन्फॉर्मेशन ले सकते हैं ओके माय आंसर टू दिस विल बी अ बिग नो बिकॉज इफ यू आर ओनली कोटिंग एब्स्ट्रैक्ट दीज एब्स्ट्रैक्ट्स डू नॉट कंटेन ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन और द एग्जैक्ट इंफॉर्मेशन एब्स्ट्रैक्ट इज जस्ट अ लाइक यू नो टू टू थ्री पैराग्राफ्स ऑफ योर होल थीसिस सो इफ यू आर गोइंग टू गेट एक्सेस टू द होल थीसिस और रिसर्च पेपर ओनली देन यू शुड कोट दैट पर्सन इन रेफरेंस अदरवाइज डोंट गो फॉर इट बिकॉज यू विल हैव डिफिकल्टी इन एक्सप्लेनिंग थिंग्स इन your research right um to this point i will explain one more thing <clears throat> which is a c um okay i'm going to read this question afterwards um uh, i was telling you yeah i shared few links with my students where you can find like you know the the literature review resources uh, very easily by the way google scholar can be used but wikipedia and some other websites that i just mentioned that there are no references available or who has written this information never ever quote them because if you quote them that will come up in plagiarism and you will have difficult time in editing your document so you need to go through you know a particular verified resources during the process of writing literature review so that you might not have difficulty at the end of your research process right and uh, to avoid that i shared um, like you know few things with my students and i will try to share that in your group as well for further assistance i hope i have addressed your um, question alicia यस मैम अनदर क्वेश्चन भी है मैम स्टार्ट में जैसे आपने बताया था ऑब्जेक्टिव्स और क्वेश्चंस का मैम जैसे कि हमारी हमारी जो थीसिस है उनमें मैम पूरा जो है हाइपोथीसिस पे कंटेंट है उसमें क्वेश्चन नहीं है तो क्या मैम हम क्वेश्चन को स्किप कर सकते क्योंकि वो आ, क्योंकि जितने ऑब्जेक्टिव होते हैं उतने ही हमें क्वेश्चन को लिखना लाजमी है मैम हमारे उसमें क्वेश्चंस है ही नहीं तो मैम इस चीज की थोड़ी डिफिकल्टी है कि क्या हम फिर क्वेश्चंस को छोड़ सकते क्योंकि मैम सारी उसमें हाइपोथीसिस है ज्यादा नो 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 यू टेल मी वन थिंग आर यू कंडक्टिंग क्वांटिटेटिव रिसर्च मैम क्वालिटेटिव देन व्हाई आर यू यूजिंग हाइपोथीसिस अम मैम क्वालिटेटिव में तो पूरी हाइपोथीसिस सॉरी 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 अकॉर्डिंग टू योर गोइंग फॉर ऑब्जर्वेशन यू शुड गो फॉर लिटिल बट अबाउट इंटरव्यूज if you if it relates to people or maybe critical analysis if it is related to any text okay you may go for any other instrument along with observation right since you do not have uh, any any hypothesis to prove at the end so observation agar aap sirf observation lenge to it will be quite personal as a researcher to usko thoda sa objectify karne ke liye you need to go for another research instrument as well okay and to answer your second question yes you need to formulate research questions as many research questions as many objectives you will have by the way on bachelor's level we suggest students to go for only 2 to 3 3 three are even enough only two research questions or research objectives okay 
मैम मीन्स हम अगर कोई और रिसर्च आर्टिकल निकालें उसमें अगर हम क्वेश्चन है हमारे टॉपिक से रिलेटेड वो क्या हम कोटेड कर सकते हैं अपनी पैराफ्रेस उसको कर सकते हैं you can paraphrase anything that you find with the reference you can paraphrase that okay and if that's relevant obviously you can paraphrase that okay but if you talking about questionnaire you should not use questionnaire in qualitative study this is what i would say okay but rest of the things in in the thesis from literature review from data collection chapter or from any other chapter if you want to quote you can with giving proper reference right Yes, ma'am. And ma'am, आप ये वाला lecture upload करेंगे क्योंकि ma'am कुछ slides रह गई थी. Yes, 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 yes. I will, I will. Okay, I have another question which I will read out loud. Um, uh, a ma'am in sampling includes participants, but if someone is working alone, then that research does not include sampling. That will be narrative type of research. Yes, it will not include any kind of sampling. The sample is only that particular, uh, person or. uh you know that particular uh, you know thing that you have that you're working upon okay that is but that is one type of research only which is narrative right the second question is ma'am is it possible to uh, to do data collection in qualitative without participants uh if it is possible to data collection in qualitative without no 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 qualitative cannot go without participants it has to have participants yes it always has to have participants right it may be in in a different form you can go for participants as a person you can go for like you know textual analysis if you're a literature student and you're you are a literature student so you go for textual analysis in that you will go through reading of different texts okay yes do we have any other questions uh can i put forward a question azia yes please uh when i conducted my research in bachelor's i did a critical discourse analysis and i my um, um data was collected through newspapers okay. i was told basically that you can have the uh, you cannot have participants in this kind of research because uh, it was not my primary data it was actually a date the secondary data Uh, with, from which i selected some images and figures and then i analyzed it using the framework of critical discourse analysis now if um, you said that in qualitative we cannot have participants so which form was uh, my research uh, i i am I, i mean i can't get it okay see you used uh, these pictorials pictorial like you know ex description of your data right but you had a data right so the yes. participant word includes anything which provides you data so i just said oh. if you are not having participants in in terms of people you might have you know data in terms of that particular text that particular pictures anything that leads to you leads you to data that would be your instrument so participants exact term only is referred to people if you do not have people it, it's fine but there should be something else which will lead you to data of course you might not right. have yeah any research which does not have any 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 data element there should be a data element but we talk about them in different name with different names participants are used for people text is used for you know lines from a chapter or lines from novel or you know newspaper just you said newspaper pictures these all are textual analysis we call it textual analysis or discourse analysis what you call it but there has to be something in in the form of or in the category of data all right all right thank you so very much okay we have one more question in qualitative we have participants because we have to survey that okay ma'am what do you prefer for a literature